Hey everyone, I am Mike Witt with Contact Industries, and today we're going to do a quick video about the differences in overt and covert target hardening. So when looking at overt and covert target hardening, we're really looking at the application as they apply to the five Ds of force protection or target hardening, right? So those five Ds are detect, deter, delay, deny, and defend. So there's a bunch of different aspects that people need to be looking at and getting a good solid blend from beginning to end of the 5D process of incorporating both over and covert principles into their security plan. So here in a minute, we're going to go through our facility and kind of point out a few of the over and covert uh, options that are available out to facilities, whether you're a school, a hospital, a military installation. Regardless, the same principles still apply. So we'll hit those here next. So out here, this would be an example of overt surveillance systems, right? So up here, we have a wide angle axis uh, camera up here that observes over our facility, right? So a camera of this nature, right, is, is very, very overt. As you can come in the parking lot, you clearly see the parking lot is under video surveillance. However, inside of our building, which we'll show you later, there are smaller cameras and they actually even make completely covert camera systems that will actually be out there for detection purposes that the public will never know are even there. So here's another example of overt target hardening, right? Basic chain link fence, barbed wire system. Typically you'll see this around motor pools, um, outside of any area where they really don't first want to have a deterrent. At the end of the day, if someone wants to get over this, they will, but it is a huge deterrent. People see that, hey, you put some level of security and protection at your facility. And once they get inside here, the entire area is surveilled, right? So this creates a delay feature and a deterrent before people going in there. So simple things like an automated gate system for traffic coming in and out, keypad that obviously only your employees or those that are authorized in the facility to have access to, and starting with a basic level of security like chain link fence. Things as simple as exterior illumination, especially outside of entry points, exit points in your facility, keeping those brightly illuminated, again, factor back into the five Ds of uh, force protection and target hardening, and also go into crime prevention, which is a whole nother uh, set of theory out there. So anyways, um, we'll go inside and check out our vestibule in here, again, to give some basic uh, tips and input on how you can incorporate a man trap or vestibule into your facility. All right, so right now we're inside of our vestibule or man trap entering into our facility. So some basic principles here. We are in a closed space now. You can have automa automated locking systems like you have here for both your secondary door and your primary door system. And just having something as simple as a RFID tag reader or a code that people can enter in to go into your facility. So it's easy as this. I'm authorized. And then once we come inside here, again, another example of overt surveillance, we have a camera system that oversees directly the, to the entrance of a facility, right? So when people are entering or exiting through your primary access point in your facility, you have a log of everything that happens through that uh, particular location. And obviously it sends a message to those coming into your facility, possibly for the first time that they are under surveillance. And um, again, it goes back into the whole deterrent feature um, which it's primarily there for, but should an event occur, it does obviously give you some forensic evidence on the back end of a particular event. So one of the examples of actually overt and covert target hardening would be our ballistic glass retrofit kit. The reason I say that is from the interior of the facility, it is very overt. You can clearly see and demonstrate that this is ballistic glass, right? Shot or unshot. It's very thick. And so uh, observers on the interior of your structure will know that they are being protected by ballistic glass. However, we do offer uh, framing kits that go around the actual ballistic armor um, to give it a more aesthetic look uh, that matches your facility. But if you come around the other side, what we typically have here, this one's been shot out, but the retrofit kit allows you to keep your existing commercial glass. So from the exterior of the facility, no one will see the difference. You have your commercial framing, you have your commercial glass, and, and your ballistic properties are actually on the interior. So from the exterior of the facility, it is covert, right? So um, this is kind of a good blend between uh, covert and overt, and what this really does is this is a deterrent for uh, individuals that may have been into your facility and scouting it out, right? So. There's a deterrent there, but also this is a huge delay feature, right? Is keeping those with firearms and things of that nature um, from entering into your facility uh, or attacking those from the exterior inside. It's a huge delay feature and denial feature. 
Again, this is Mike Witt with Contact Industries. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to reach out to us at info at contactindustries.com. Be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube, and we're also out there on Instagram and LinkedIn as well. So be sure to follow us, and we hope to see you out there.